Hello. Thank you. Hey, everyone. Thank you for coming. And thanks for clapping. And thanks, Venetia, for being so nice. Yeah. Look, we've got a new logo. Oh, yeah. That's taken a little while, hasn't it? Yeah, what do you certainly. all think of the new logo? Does it look like the old logo? Yeah, kind of. It's kind of, sort of. That's what we're going for. Yeah. It's just uh, a slightly better version. So we thought that, obviously, in this room today is... This is Vivolution, which is arguably the greatest vegan festival on the entire planet. And we know that the sort of people who come here, the sort of people who have got, like you know, visions of making the world a better place and using business to do that. So what we wanted to do is give you 10 hacks to build a global brand. Now, we're not experts, and there's many of you in this room who are already doing incredible things. Look, there's plant-based news down here. Legend. There's Revolution, there's Bodyweight D. There's a load of very exciting <laughs> people, and I'm sure many of you have already got vegan businesses that you're working on. But we have been doing this for three years. We didn't just, like, accidentally fall into Bosch, and it happened. Uh, we spent a lot of time thinking about it. So we're going to share with you our learnings along the way. Yeah. Hey. So that's us yeah. eating burgers. Yeah, so Venetia gave us a really nice um, welcome. Like, yeah, we've sold a bunch of books. We've made a bunch of videos. We've had a, a bunch of success, which is great. Um, but enough about us. Well, Let's we've crack. got a video about yeah, us. Yeah, there's first. a video. <laughs> we thought we'd let this video, if you don't know who we are, this is the kind of thing we do, and if you don't care, it will at least get you hungry for all the food that's out the back. Yeah, all that delicious food. Quite cringe. I, I found it really cringe as well. But you know what? It was a nice video, and it was made by Cat and Charlie, our team. Very good videographers on our team. Yes. But what we want to do is try and focus on uh, some inspiring people that we've seen along the way uh, to illustrate our stories of how you can build a really powerful brand. So Greta, what an absolute heroine hero Greta is. Like, yeah. she's a personal inspiration for both Ian and myself. Mm -hmm. Obviously, she started out sitting outside that little government building with the sign yeah. saying, I'm not really happy about what's going on, you know, yeah. about climate change. And it's unbelievable because it was just her, one 14, 15-year-old girl at the time, sat outside the government building just with her little sign and a little yellow raincoat thinking, I care about this thing. I wonder if people will join me. And two years, three years later, we're looking at, like, just a revolution is appearing because in, not solely because of her, but, like, She's done a, a lot to sort of promote it. And, and obviously with Greta, I don't think she had a solid plan. I don't think she set out to go, right, I'm going to be on like the cover of this magazine or that magazine. I'm going to refuse awards. She was just like, I'm not happy about what's going on. I'm going to go and do the only thing I can do because I've got a really strong drive, a really strong purpose, and I know what that is. And so that's our first hack. It sounds obvious, but it's to define your reasons really clearly. Why are you doing what you're doing? This is how Ian and I started. Mm -hmm. This isn't just some like, like verbatim nonsense that we're just chucking out there. We sat down and we wrote down what we were about, why we were about it, and that drives every single decision that we make. Aha, uh -huh. so what's going on here? Well, that is a teeny tiny little boat, and that is a bloody massive wave. And basically, this guy here with this little wave didn't plan very well. He's got no plan. He's got no plan. I mean, he could have should with that wave of that size, he's just taken a submarine. And there's that saying, you know, we don't fail to plan. We, we don't plan to fail, we fail to plan. <laughs> I knew it was one way around yeah. or the other way around. And um, a great example of this is Vivolution, where we are right now. Think yeah. about Damien and Judy and how much planning has gone into getting hundreds of people in here food for everybody, mm. coffee for everybody. Yeah. They had their purpose, which we talked about in the last hack, but they also spent a lot of time in Excel spreadsheets, 
PowerPoints, presentations, mm. all that gubbins. That time spent planning is absolutely crucial. So don't just come up with an idea and then think, I'm about this because I'm about that and I'm gonna start making content mm. or start selling brownies or whatever. Spend some time in Excel learning how to plan. It's also, um, there's a few vegan businesses that like, they come, and then they go. And the reason why is because they're, they're sort of built on this passion for veganism, which is obviously something that we all have. And kudos to them for that. But like sometimes they stutter and fail because the planning wasn't key. So, so plan. Planning. That Definitely. is hack number two. Plan really, really well. Hack number three. So you've got your plan. You've got your reason. You've spent a lot of time looking at Excel spreadsheets and PowerPoint. And maybe you've ended up in like a rabbit hole of watching videos on YouTube at four o'clock in the morning and then think, <laughs> what am I doing with my life? And then you pull yourself back and yeah. then you're back in a world of looking at your plan again. Mm -hmm. Now you need to go out and test that and learn and refine. Yeah. Talk to people, refine your ideas, and spend time improving that plan. Yeah. Like learning doesn't stop at school. In fact, it probably starts after school. So like podcasts, books, TV shows, conversations with people, YouTube videos, they're all out there to help you out and never stop learning. Like appreciate the process of learning and you will go further than you would have otherwise. So let's just uh, find out if we can about this point. So, how many people in here, if you just put your hands up, how many people in here are vegan or vegan-ish? Everybody. Okay, that's good. So I, I'm taking you on what's called a yes ladder because you're obviously all going to say yes to that first <laughs> one because I want you to actually bother to put your hand up for the next one. How many of you have got or are thinking about doing some kind of a business or hack or content or blog or whatever? Put your hand up if that's you. Good. Okay, cool. How many of you have done a plan? Put that hand up. So the, the hands are becoming less and less. Okay, okay. And how many of you did a plan once and then forgot about it? Yeah, we've done that a few yeah, times. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That plan should be a, a living, breathing part of your existence. Yeah. It's you not know. concrete, is it? You don't write the thing it, like with a chisel and a hammer. Yeah. Like, you write it on the computer, which means you can refine. Because the thing is, like we said about learning, like you learn something, you're like, oh, I didn't know that before, so I need to put that into my plan. So your plan should keep on going, but the core goal should still be the same. And then when you do end up in that YouTube rabbit hole at four o'clock in the morning. Which happens all the time. And then you wake up with no sleep. You've got a plan that you can look at that tells you what you need to do. Right, so learn that's and refine. It. That's point number three. Point number four. So this is um, an example of a good business. Mm. Okay, if you can imagine, this is maybe a husband and wife selling some food and they've got a line of people buying stuff that they want. And out here, you've got more examples of that. Amazing traders yeah. who are creating delicious vegan food that we can all go and enjoy. I, what are you looking forward to? That One Planet Pizza is looking good. Yeah, I like One Planet Pizza. I like them all, though, to be fair. I'm also looking forward to the after party. Oh, yes. Uh. We're, we're, we're having a little after party <laughs> later on, which will be fun. <laughs> but anyway, back to the program. So the point here is you need to build something, uh, create a product that people actually want to buy. Mm -hmm. This food is a great place to start, um, but there are a lot of companies who kind of second guess ideas or products that don't really have a demand. They're kind of thinking about, mm, maybe I should create Uber for vegan sandwiches. Yeah, that's it. Well, we did a business before Bosch, and uh, we were working at the Google campus, which is just off Old Street Roundabout, or also Silicon Roundabout. And we got to know these guys who were doing this thing where it's like you'd save 30 seconds on ordering your coffee because it was like um, an app to basically like order your coffee <laughs> in the coffee shop that you're already in, and then <laughs> you get it a little bit quicker. And it's like 30 seconds. It's like, yeah, it's okay, but it's like, it's not really solving that many problems is it and no word of a lie there was a search engine for dentists yeah uh -huh. that just uh, we don't need that that's yeah. not a product that people need so make sure that you're really stress testing the product that you're building is it something that people want can you get a queue of people waiting to buy that product from you and if not mm -hmm. you might not be solving a real problem so that's hack number four solve real problems be mm -hmm. brutal in your decision making process about what you're going to spend your time on Next one. Oh man, look, look at this, at this guy. dude. He's yeah, that is a strong stance. <laughs> right? And what's more, it's a strong house. And you know damn well that he's built it himself. So this is one guy, he's obviously like a bit of a jack of all trades, which we all are when we start our own business, mm. by the way. You have to do like, like the taxes and all that kind of random gubbins. Mm. You can't just do the thing that you wanted to do in the first place. So this is an example of a guy who's building a house lean. Lean. 
Lean is a good word. It's lean. The book by Eric Reese. Oh, The Lean Startup. The Lean Startup. Great book. It's a good one. Compare it with this. Now, <laughs> I mean, I can't even count how many people are they that's Mormon? taken. Are they Mormons? Uh, maybe. With the, with the yeah, hat. maybe. Yeah, but I mean, They've like got that, the hats on, haven't they? I mean, that's quite an impressive house, but it kind of needs to be to house all those people. Do you think it's a church? Um, nah, man, it's a bomb. It's a big it's red a bomb. bomb. Right, the yeah. point here, before we go on into talking about Mormons too much, yeah. is that think about the size of payroll between this house yeah. and this house, right? That is a lean project, yeah. and that is a very expensive project to run. Now, I don't know about you, right? Which one would you rather live in? I like the little one. I like the little one too. Look at this guy. As long as he's not there, though, I, I don't want to live with him. <laughs> I feel like he would bear hug me. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, like that house looks like it's been built to last. It's sturdy. It's hard. It's it, and, and and he's like put some love and care and attention into the graft of it. He really has. And if you're building a business for yourself, building a brand for yourself, I think the most important thing to think about is that. You know, people often say we need money for this, we need to get cash in so that we can build this thing or whatever. It's actually just try and operate as lean as you can. Mm. In a way, you can think about the funds you have in your business, not as being cash in your bank, but being time. So we actually, at Bosch, think about how many months we have in the bank yeah. rather than how much cash you have in the bank. And it's about buying yourself time because nine out of 10 businesses are gonna fail. Mm -hmm. uh, and that includes vegan businesses in this room. Maybe you've got a slightly better chance because vegan is a growing market, yeah. but you are buying time. And the, the more time you can buy, the more long you can stay alive, the more likely you are to persist, learn, refine, find a real problem to solve for people and build a business that will work. So that's uh, hack number five. Hack number five, which brings us on to hack number six. Now, these guys, don't want to mess with those guys, but these wolves basically represent your team because the team is very, very important. It's the wolf pack. Mm. Who in here has seen The Hangover? Yeah. Right, Good so movie. this is the wolf pack. Imagine, think about some of the like vegan businesses or vegan charities or campaign groups that we know. So there's Damien and Judy from Vivolution. There's Matthew and Jane from Veganuary. There's Robbie uh, and Klaus from Plant-Based News. Robbie and Klaus from Plant-Based News. Um, Damien and What are they Italia called from, from Temple of Satan? Temple you know, of Satan anyway. people. Basically. Like, time <laughs> they, and time again. Duos. Exactly. Or trios. It's not, it doesn't have to be two. The point is like, Find people to work with, find a team that you can trust. That's but there's it. more burgers. So there's us two, and uh, obviously like, we're kind of like the face of Bosch and like write a bunch of the recipes and stuff, but we don't do everything. We have Kat and we have Charlie, and without those two, Bosch wouldn't function half as well as it does. And the key thing here is build a team that you can trust, a small team, a lean team, a team with people that you can trust because doing it on your own is an absolute nightmare. So if you are building something and you're still yeah. solitary, maybe think about whether there's someone else you can get on board with you because it's a lonely thing building a business. Yeah, don't just pull anyone in though. I mean, like Henry and I have known each other since we were like at school, since we were 11 years old. And like we trust each other and we know each other's sort of like our kind of strengths and our weaknesses so we bounce together and build something good together. Like, so yeah, you might not have a school friend who you can like build a business with, but go out and find people who can help you build what you want to build. I'm sure that they are out there. Right, next one. Who knows any of the people on these slides? Yes, yeah. okay, cool. Who's the one on the top left? Does anyone shout his name? Charles Trippy. Ah. Charles Trippy, because I couldn't remember that. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's Casey Neistat, because I love him. Yeah. This guy, so do you know, do you watch him? You uh, a yeah. subscriber? Yeah. You know what I'm gonna say then, right? He's been vlogging every day for 10 years. 10 years. Not only has he been vlogging every single day on YouTube for 10 years, but he had uh, brain surgery twice and still vlogged every day through brain surgery, mm -hmm. including one of them, he had the brain surgery whilst he was awake, it was like a local anaesthetic, and he vlogged the surgery. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> now that's an extreme example, but even Casey's yeah. really consistent. Casey, very consistent. I mean, he basically built, um, he vlogged every day for about three years, if not more. And over the course of that, like, he started real small, no one knew who he is, what he's doing, and then obviously with consistency, he just built up this massive audience, and now he is highly regarded as probably the best, most influential vlogger on the planet. 
And the key thing here, before we get into that tofu bacon, the key thing here is it's about consistency, yeah. uh, finding a way to be consistent. Being consistent with content isn't just about gaming the YouTube algorithm or getting better about what you do. It's also about building audience expectation, building a regular touch point with the people that follow you or the people who buy from you. So find a way to be consistent. All these traders, we love to talk about food traders because they are proper hard yeah, the workers. Life and soul of this whole movement. They're there every week, week in, week out, rain, sun, whatever, selling food. So you build up that consistency with their brand. Yes, and we're pretty consistent, and we're consistent with recipe videos and recipes because we know that if there's recipes out there, then people are likely to cook them. And if they're cooking them, it means they're eating vegan food, which can only be a good thing. Q, tofu bacon sandwich. QVT. I don't think we need to show that. We don't video, need to show that. Basically, the idea. it's a tofu bacon sandwich that we put in to illustrate the consistency. Yeah. But we put out those videos every single, almost every single day, every mm. single week, three, four, five, six, seven. And we've been doing it for three years. We're going to carry on doing that consistently. And it's free. We don't get paid for that stuff. We just make the videos, put them out because we want to keep that consistent engagement with the audience. Exactly. So produce consistently. Boom. Aha. Uh -huh. Who knows what that is? Oh, like, it's a weird question to ask a massive room. I'll tell yeah, you what there's a guy is. over there. What is it? Model T. Model T, yes, the Ford Model Boom. T. And the colour of the Model T is black. Henry Ford, it's got a great name, by the way. Yeah, Henry. Yeah, said, uh, you can have any car you like as long as it's black. There were already cars before this one, uh, but he made the first mass production car by saying, you know what, we're not even going to do colours. It's all going to be black. And he picked the good colour. It was good. I mean, we used fair. to wear black. We've yeah, now yeah. stopped wearing black. Well, you still got black shoes on. And they're black, aren't they? Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah, okay. So any car you like, as long as it's black. He made the assembly line, which was a really smooth way to make cars. Mm. And he actually, a little trivia fact here for you, he invented the uh, nine to five, 40 hour working week. Yeah. Not sure that's a good thing though. Well, no, it's better than just like, like seven days a week. I'd like four. Yeah, well, four would be cool. <laughs> or three. But you wouldn't get much done. No. Well, anyway. you might, though. You, well, might. you might do. You never know. Anyway, anyway, we're rambling now. So that is the Model T by Henry Ford. That man was super efficient. Mm -hmm. And actually, when we set up Bosch, before we set up Bosch, we were both thinking about doing things that weren't very scalable. So I was thinking of making a frozen ready meal delivery company, which sounded like a good idea. I was well into it. I, this was a lasagna that I was refining in my home, just like, I'm going to freeze this and deliver it to people. But it just wasn't very scalable. Yeah, and what I was doing at that time was thinking about setting up a cafe. I was thinking about it a lot, even moved back to Sheffield and was looking for sites to find said cafe. But again, it was like, this isn't very scalable. So then I called Ian, I was like, dude, why don't you come back to London? Instead of building a cafe, I've got an idea. Let's build a cafe for the world. Mm. But it will be like a digital cafe where people have to buy their own ingredients, cook the food, <laughs> do the washing up. Yeah. It doesn't really make that much sense, but it will be quite straightforward for us to do. Yeah. We won't have to spend loads of money or make loads of lasagnas. Yeah, initially I said no, but eventually <laughs> I was persuaded to the idea and Bosch was born. Yeah, he literally like ignored my first three calls. Yeah. Well, well, he was know. like, oh, I'm busy doing this like silly Other cafe thing. thing. I was like, come on, dude, come back to London, <laughs> please. But I got him back in the end. Yeah. So now, continuing in that thought of efficiently building things, We've got this digital channel where we're making videos and we're going to continue making videos for free for everybody because we want people to be cooking vegan cheese and vegan bacon videos, recipes, instead yeah. of actual cheese wrapped on bacon and chicken and all that mm. stuff. So these are nice pictures, right? These are some of the nice pictures. You like these pictures? Yeah. yeah. Okay, good. Right, well, these pictures are going to be on the front of our products that are going to supermarkets. Woohoo! <laughs> so... <laughs> oh, that's nice. <laughs> right. We've not announced that anywhere ever nope. yet. This is coming hopefully early next year. This is going to be Bosch food appearing in shops. Yeah. And the really nice thing about that is we're not going to have to make any of it at all. Yeah. Scalable. <laughs> Scalable. Exactly. That's the point here. That is Nooch, by the way. We yeah. are doing Nooch. Yeah, hey. Should we, are we allowed to say that? This is naughty, isn't it? I don't know. 
Oh, anyway, it now. these are all boss products. Right. So that's the cauliflower buffalo wings. That's our piri piri chorizo bake. Nooch. Burgers, burgers, burgers. Yeah. Healthy food, sustainable packaging coming to shops soon. Boom. Boom. <laughs> right. Very exciting. Uh, another Thank thing you. that we've got coming. Oh, and we've got another one. Right. Yay. Okay, shameless plug here. New book coming out soon. But as well as that new book, right, we've also got this uh, digital version of that new book. So we're going to be re releasing the Healthy Vegan Cookbook. Yes, and the Healthy Vegan course to go along with the cookbook. So yeah, that's all coming out. And the thinking about this is that people, you know, we've all been to these amazing events and had too many seitan burgers or, you know, Oreo, deep fried ice cream, all that yeah. stuff. And then you're like, oh. Yeah. But, and in fact, some Bosch recipes, like um, lasagna of... with all that stuff and all that naughtiness in there. Yeah. And we just wanted to make sure people knew what healthy food was on a plant-based diet, how to actually eat the rainbow, get all their nutrients and support whatever they may or may not be doing in the gym. So that's and why we've written this book. A, a healthy food is obviously a massive burger. Yeah, that is a healthy burger, <laughs> believe it or not. And the point about efficiency is that we're making a course which is going to be really efficient, and that helps us to scale our business while still just being four of us in the team. Mm -hmm. So, number eight, execute efficiently. Boom. Right. Did anyone see the documentary about Fire Festival? Yeah, Fire. Put your hand up if you saw that. Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. In fact, there were two. There was one on Netflix and one on Amazon. Yeah. One was better than the other. I mean, like, what really went wrong with Fire Festival? Was it like the... Tense? Well, what did he do wrong? Just shout out an answer. Everything. 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 Yeah, okay. <laughs> Good point. So yeah. um, you can say he did a million things wrong. Yeah. I would argue that the thing that that guy did wrong uh, was to take too much investment throughout his whole career and end up kind of bent by investor pressure. Yeah, that was, meant he was doing bad things. The last thing that you want is having investors and lots of them snapping at your heels, demanding things from you, like trying to sort of turn your head to a different way of working. We've experienced that in the last company that we did, but thankfully in this one we didn't because we learned from the first one. That's why we're teaching you now. Be careful of the funds. Yeah, so we're not saying don't take investment. Of course, if it makes sense for your business to take some investment, then do so, but do so cautiously because every single bit of money that you take from an outside source is going to create pressure mm. driving you in a certain direction. We've not taken investment with Bosch. I don't think we're going to. There's loads of people throwing money at plant-based food at the moment right yeah. now. But treat it with caution because there's stuff that's going to come down the line that might force you into somewhere that you don't want to be. And the final one, this is a very inspiring individual. Yes, very inspiring indeed. Um, her name is Helen. <laughs> Debbie. Um, Debbie. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's kind of similar-ish. Right, anyway. But Debbie, like what, uh, Debbie Millman. Uh, Debbie Millman. And the thing is, right, what she did is, is really, really cool. Because she, when she was six years old, she sat down at a desk and she drew herself, like a little sort of stick person here, and then she drew a, um, a big sort of, you know, like a car or whatever. And the car was driving past um, a massive advertising board and it was in New York City. And then a few years later, she was like rifling through a drawer and she picked this out and was like, goodness gracious me, this is, this is an odd thing to have in my hand here. This is six year old me designing the life that I now lead. So she's a designer, she lives in New York, and she designs logos for some of the biggest brands that you'd find their products on supermarket shelves. And through that realization that she'd kind of drawn a picture of what then became her life, mm. she designed this way of teaching new art students how to design their own lives. Yeah. And the process goes like this. You literally sit down at a piece of paper, a computer, whatever you feel comfortable with, and imagine yourself 10 years from now. You yeah. think about where you're gonna live, what you're gonna see on a daily basis, who's gonna be around you, what animals will be there, mm. what your daily routine will look like. And you design your life 10 years from now, yeah. with the thinking being that your mind will then steer you there. Yeah, because sometimes it's really easy to sort of be like, have passion about something, um, and sort of like work hard at something, but not actually have like a direction or a goal. The second that you put those things down on paper, the things that you, because I think we're quite, I don't know, I'm quite a positive person naturally, and so are you, and mm -hmm. hopefully most of the people in this room are as well. So it's like, with a bit of positive thinking, if you start designing your life 10 years from now, you're not going to end up in some hovel. You'll end up like living a decent life. <laughs> so once you've got it down on paper, it's kind of, it becomes reality. It sounds a bit sort of hocus pocus, but actually it isn't. We've both done it 
And it's, it's good. It's really solid exercise. So yeah, designing a life is a good thing to do. So go through that exercise. If you actually want to listen to, uh, there was a podcast episode on this, just look at Tim Ferriss, Debbie Millman, or probably just Google how to design a life. It's an incredible experience to go through. We've both really benefited from it. And the key thing is, if you design your life, you might realize you don't want that investment. Mm -hmm. You know, the investor might want you to build 10 people, 20 people, 30 people, big team you have to manage, stresses, raising more investment, not enough cash, running out of time, stress, 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 stress. Maybe you don't need that. The key thing that we've both learned from the previous company that we ran was, First of all, you need to look after yourself. Mm. Your company can't be healthy if you're not healthy. Your brand can't be healthy if you're not healthy. So look after yourself. And it's really, really important that you do because let's be honest, the planet is fucked right now. Mm. It's a very, very scary time to be alive. We've all watched the documentaries. We all know more than the average person about what's going on in the world right now. You're probably, the people who put their hands up are thinking about what businesses they can build to help reduce climate change, to help save animals, to help, he help human health as well. And what we know now is that we've got 12 years to save the world from climate catastrophe. <laughs> Humanity has wiped out 60% of animal populations since 1970. And the vegan diet will save the world from hunger, fuel, poverty, and the worst impacts of climate change. And that's from the United Nations. So we need you all to stay well, to look after yourselves, to be healthy, and to build things that work, because the planet needs you. Take a moment. <laughs> and that's it. We've been Bosch. Thank you very much for See coming to hang out with us. Please succeed. See you next time. Nice one, brother.